Welcome to Humana Story. Humana Story was built out of the need for human companionship, a togetherness that only comes from people helping others. We wanted to be able to tell our stories and share our expressions with everyone who needs them. By us telling our stories, we're able to share that moment that forever changed who we are. But the idea is not just to tell our story, but to share the journey in how we overcame that moment in our lives, allowing others to read and see the story and connect to the one sharing. Most people want to tell the horrid things, but fail to share the accomplishments. At Humana Story, we are not those people. We are strong. The winners. We are the achievers. We believe that sharing our experiences will help someone out there in the same situation and allow them to connect with others that have already conquered their struggle. We give the resource within our stories to help those who otherwise would fall. The help to stand up and face what is in front of them without fear or doubt. We believe everyone has the ability to succeed in life. If you are alive on this little rock hurtling through the endless void we call the universe, you are a Humana story. How much of one is up to you? It's Fantastic Friday. Yeah, that's right. And we are doing yet another special episode of Fantastic Friday. It is Flat Friday. I believe number four or five. I don't know. We'll have to look. But anyway, this is another beautiful, exciting episode of Coffee with Humana Story, episode number 42. I'm joined by the lieutenant. And if you'd like to join the conversation as well, simply log into our current Humana Story live thread. Give us your best shot. And if they're good, I'll read them on the air. And if they're bad, the lieutenant will read them on the air. Coffee with Humana Story is the unscripted show whose theme is created by members, for members, and involves Humana Story members. We also have the poor unfortunate soul, the Sarge, joining us today. And if you can't find the show, you're probably using a xylophone in the bathroom somewhere off grid. But more importantly, the more you weigh, the harder you are to kidnap, so eat more chocolate. Callers can call in at 1619-798-6307. If you're in the San Diego area or don't care about long distance charges, you can also Skype us at Humana Story. H-U-M-A-N-A-S-T-O-R-Y for a worldwide connection. Make sure you use Coffee with Humana Story, episode number 42, as the response. Reading with Humana Story, Saturdays at 12.30. Don't miss out on our guest speaker interview, Life in Review. And today's theme, it's Flat Friday, number five. The question of the day is, why hide Flat Earth? Why not just come out in the open? I guess there's two questions. And without further ado, I have the Sar, John. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks very much for having me yet again. Another early Friday morning on the, yeah, on the West okay. Coast. <laughs> All right. So we, okay. Well, first let me get the lieutenant. So I figured, you know, we got the Sarge. We can have the lieutenant too. So, hey, lieutenant. Yeah, that's the lieutenant. Nice. nice. <laughs> you know, you want to you want to hear a weird thing because yeah, I've gotten sergeant military jokes pretty much since I was in second grade, but because uh, you know it, it's it's too easy. But when you went on weird, statistically speaking, I, I there was a weird anomaly that happened when I was growing going through my uh, graduating class. And got to remember, there was only I, not even 120 people in my graduating class, but. I, we had, in my class, a Mark Sergeant, a Pam Major, and an Elisa Colonel. Three military ranks, all <laughs> in the same same class. That was, And I, of course, was the low man on the tar- totem pole. It goes Colonel, then Major, then Sergeant. But wow. It was, it was, I didn't even figure that out until way later. So is that the question? <laughs> so, you want so, me to just jump right into I'm going to talk moon. Okay. So looking at the moon this morning, and pretty much every morning, I see it. What I see is a white circle with a bunch of sky patches in it. Now, this is where it gets confusing, and I figured you'd be able to explain this on air to the people. Yeah. 
When I'm looking at the moon from the ground, what I see, it looks like there's something white on top of something blue. Does that make sense? So the okay. background, the sky is blue. Yeah. So why is it in the background if, in fact, it's the atmosphere of Earth? Shouldn't the moon be behind it all? You look at the moon right now. If you go outside, I can look at it bright as day. In California, it's brighter than hell. So I can see the sky is completely blue. Yeah. And then I've got the, the, the moon. Yeah. And then it's like in the moon, there's patches of blue. If the moon is actually an artificial object, you know, meaning that uh, it not only is it is it mechanical, but it's the, it, whatever it's displaying, it can display. Remember whatever it wants. Uh, the, I got to I got to go back to the blood moon reference because the blood moon it can't be possible. You know, it's like, well, how does the blood moon happen? That that's actually a debunker argument. How does the blood moon? How does the moon turn red if there's no Earth between the sun and the moon on a flat model? And that's because the moon projects whatever it wants to project. There's got to be some things. Everyone wants to make it a natural process. Everyone keeps trying to think, oh, you know, the moon rotates this one way. You see this face and the stars do this. And, and they keep trying to, to see it as a, as a non-changing orga- organic process, meaning it doesn't, there's, no, there's no weird phasing and there's no weird advanced technology being used. But the moon has to be. Uh, projected on it part of it has to be a projection screen because of what it has to do what it has to accomplish it has to accomplish blood moons it has to accomplish phases phases are completely artificial how does a shadow show up on the moon when there's no earth between the sun and the and the moon uh, the the uh and what you were saying how does the sky bleed through and why do you see sort of like a bluish well, hue on the moon why not the well, moon can accommodate for it for anything yeah, well, I mean, I, I, can, I can see that, but if you're trying to make it look real and you're trying to say that uh, it's it's in outer space, yeah, it's 263,000 miles away, then... Oh, 236. 237. Well, I'm horrible with distances, so I don't really That's right. care, but That's it's right. really far, and I am not going to walk it. So, Two, 237. got to remember that. 237. Yeah, so, why... Okay, so... If you're trying to why, why not make it look why? more real than it actually is? Thank you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The, because because yeah. it it's um up until now, really up until last year, most people didn't think twice about it. It's it's the old line from the Truman show, which is when the director was was being interviewed up in the moon and he said, "Look, we accept the world that is presented to us." We accept it. When the, why, why one of the little rants, my little three-minute rants, when, when it's like, look, when you're a child, children don't believe in lies. So you can tell you can tell a kid when they're five years old, six years old, look, you live in the belly of a whale. And all those lights you see up in the sky are just fireflies that got trapped in here with us. And as long as nobody questions it around you, you're going to believe it. So when it comes to the moon, pfft, I mean, I know the display properties aren't perfect, well, but everyone. I, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I when we, I, hell, thanks to you, jerk. Thanks, <laughs> Thank, thanks to you. Um, yeah. I've been looking at the moon intently lately, and uh, so, I mean, yeah, I, I sat back. Him. I told Joy to been doing I, it too. Yeah, we yeah. literally were just sitting back, and I went, you know, because of him, I, I keep looking at the damn moon yeah so you've actually gotten me to look up so i well here's here's a moon here's a moon thing for you and that is somebody actually again a listener i get the best stuff from listeners they said okay when we look at the moon it's really really bright right it's it's you know especially in a full moon it's hard to look at even you know even without night vision with night vision it's impossible to look at the moon because it, it reflects you know it's generating so much light so the question is when we were on the moon taking pictures of the earth even though it wasn't a full picture of the earth why wasn't the earth because remember the moon was a dull gray surface that shouldn't be reflecting much of anything and the and the the uh the earth is all sorts of blue water and and should be reflecting all sorts of stuff the earth from the moon should have been really really bright i mean super glowing bright that's not what the pictures they took it's like oh yeah there's the the earth so wait a minute yeah right the moon's supposed to be a reflection of the sun yeah so then, the why Earth all the pictures? No, 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 no. <clears throat> all right. 
then why would the moon, why would the people who landed on the moon not be blinded to death? I mean, Bingo. if you were Bingo. landing on the moon, wouldn't it be all so super white? You wouldn't be able to see. Super crap. white, absolutely. And every picture that we saw was dull, gray, ashy, non-reflective. That, yeah, they should have been just bathed in light, if, if that was correct. And uh, we didn't see I mean, anything. Take take a pool for example. You jump out into the water. You you're it's a bright sunny day. I mean you're literally putting your hands on your head. You're you're freaking out. You can't see nothing. Yeah. It would be pretty much like that, except godlike, right? I mean. Yeah, yeah, and which is explains again. You know, you got to stay consistent with what you're trying to present, which is why when they were actually approaching the moon. Why weren't they approaching this big glowing white ball? Because remember, there was always on the sunny side. So why didn't they have a camera in the front of that capsule that was capturing the whole thing as they were zooming right into it? Why didn't they have any time lapse <laughs> at all? Never did. Well, okay. So I did get one question came in, and uh, I was going to ask what you thought on it. I'm sure you've already talked about it. I think I ran it by you a couple days ago, anyway. Sure. So Doug Clevenger says. How could one explain the Haley's comment that reoccurs in our night sky? Oh, sure. I, again, and, and I, I'm, I'm not going to belittle the guy. I mean, I get that question quite a bit. Usually it's in the form of asteroids and, and anything else that's going on up there. When it comes to space, and I know it's tough to let go, you got to remember that um, art imitates life and life imitates art and so on and so on. So if you've ever, if he has any doubts, go to a planetarium because planetariums, actually, they've got routines for comets. I think we have the natural history of space or science thing. What is it out Mo here, Mark? Uh, people used to go to planetariums and then they kind of turned into like a recreational thing. So it'd be like la Laser Floyd and Laser Zeppelin. You know, you'd go there and they'd, they'd project a whole bunch of stuff on the ceiling while you supposedly were sober lying on your back on the ground, which was not true. Everyone was just high baked like a cake watching the ceiling but they've got no they got routines for Haley's Comet I know that for a fact uh and so what is Haley's Comet if they to answer the question bluntly uh it is part of the star and planet projection system no no different when you go to a planetarium you're watching the stars and the planets and you will see comets go by in the planetarium that's all it is it's not even a physical object uh, now what are meteors that's a little different because people will say, well, what about meteors? Because meteors come into the, uh, the atmosphere and they crash on things. We see them burning up in the sky. That's mechanical. That is, uh, that's super easy, by the way, you know, from a uh, design standpoint. All you do is you, you know, introduce a piece of metal ore at speed, shallow trajectory, throw it through the atmosphere. The atmosphere generates friction, burns it up. Uh, try not to aim at anything like Los Angeles and New York if you can help it. And that's, re and that's a great reinforcement tool wonderful reinforcement tool uh but yeah Haley's comet just a uh, just another part of the system although comets don't get to uh don't get to land on us they just go through yeah, the sky it's, it sounds like some of the on the other side's throwing a rock through our atmosphere <laughs> yeah exactly yep throwing up throwing a pebble into the the aquarium that's really all it is nothing nothing so, fancy okay so my uh question of the day my yeah Beautiful, lovely question of the day that I just had here a second ago. Are you gonna like do like trumpet music when you do this one in the edit version? <laughs> That's it. I can do it now if you want. Or, or you can just do, or you can do applause. You know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the question of the day. Well, why hide it? I mean, I know, I know you've answered the question a million times, but oh no, no, no! Really, I can. You, you might be able to. You might be able to get a different wrinkle out of it. Um, why hide it uh, from the authorities' point of view? That by me, I mean the government and the royals and the super rich, whoever's involved, whoever knows at the highest point. You don't want to make a mess. You, they, they've got a big thing on stability. You don't want to create chaos when there is no chaos. So even if you had a plan to introduce this to the public, and that plan was had a 90% probability of working. But a 10% chance says that the population is going to grab pitchforks and torches and just start burning it all down. Are, are you going to roll those dice? Uh, and in this, in, this, in this case, they're not going to. I wouldn't have probably either because, you know, you, you're making this decision back in the late 50s. And uh, for the but there's three big reasons. And I'll, I'll rattle them off real quick. Uh, the first reason is the education system. Right.
Humana's story is the story of humanity, one person at a time. We believe each person has a story to tell, and each story shapes that person into who they are today. Collectively, and more importantly, each and every person's story shapes this little blue rock we call home. We are all together whether we like it or not. We also believe that your unique story might just help someone else traveling down your pathway in life. You might be their guide through this rough time. We are always looking for more exciting stories to share with the world. If you've got one, come share it with us today. And welcome back. It's Fantastic Friday, and it is episode 42. We're doing Flat Earth Friday number 5. So, Doug Clevenger, do me a favor, write me an email when you get a chance. We got something for you. So, why hide Flat Earth? That's where we were off, and you were saying why something that I'm you wanted a sex change. Exactly. Uh, just because I don't even know what the female okay. um, equivalent... What's the female version of Mark? It's not Mary. It's um, Marcella. Ooh, Marcella. I like that. Margarita. Margarita, that is not that... How... Really? So I'm going to change. I'm going to be, uh, be Latino at the same We're going to do that, too? That's hey, you know what? That day's coming. All right? Don't knock it until you see it. Oh, I know. Well, yeah, you're down in California. Anyway, okay. So here's <laughs> here's the deal. So there's three things that's, that are that going to happen uh, if if this thing gets, you know, if, if it's brought out the wrong way. If, if you're, well, even if it's brought out the right way, there's three things that are going to happen. Uh, one is, of course, the education system is going to be overturned uh, immediately, which is, uh, any, granted, there aren't a lot of astrophysics departments and astronomy departments. There's, there, I mean, there's some in, in major universities all over the place. Those things are gone. Those go away. And then the major physical sciences that, that still remain, uh, geology, hydrology, archaeology, biology, blah, 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 anything with an ology next to it, those all have to be rebuilt. So all these textbooks have to be rewritten. Luckily, most of the textbooks now are digital, so they can be rewritten fairly, fairly quickly. And science takes a big hit right then and there because uh, you, you're, you've got uh, – so from a religious standpoint, for example, uh, your major religions, you know, Buddhism, Hinduism, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, they, they all have been looking for uh, some mystical, magical proof of God, proof of intelligent design. They get that you know, because if, it's, if it's, there's a structure, then it was built. It was built. There was a creator. And – if that happens, well, then there's this big backlash against science, potentially, where religion comes back and says, okay, you guys were wrong about the world. What else were you wrong about? And then religion on the flip side says, you know what? We were right about, we were right about this. What else are we right about? Now, hopefully they don't turn and, and you know, it doesn't, hopefully it doesn't get super, super ugly. But you can see the, this major paradigm shift that would also happen. So you get the education shift, the religious shift, and then you've got the personal shift. And that, to me, is the, probably the most important one, which is you become, you now all of a sudden potentially had somebody looking over your shoulder uh, your entire life. And... That and you, at that point, okay, uh, you start to think may, it may not even be real. They don't even have to show up, whoever the creator is, or creators are. But now it's like, okay, uh, I'm accountable for my actions potentially. Therefore, what am I? What would I not do now that I used to do? So, am I going to war? Am I going to if do, if I kidnap people for a living? Am I still kidnapping people? Uh, do, do you do, are you doing? Are am I robbing anybody? Are you doing anything malicious? against anybody if you think i'm kidding think about it this way uh we've all and and this was in one of the clues which was you everyone's run a red light you me everybody we've all run red lights at one point or another or a stop sign right but then now you know over the last 10 15 years somebody puts a camera in that intersection you're not running it anymore why not it's like well because it's got a camera i'm gonna get caught then why were you thinking about running it in the first place and the, now it's like now okay now you don't run the stoplight you don't do the malicious things are you gonna i mean honestly you can even lie to somebody i like a genuine full bo- full bo- uh you know big lie you're gonna lie to somebody so this changes our behavior and the, you know and, and this and then the last thing and it's kind of a side note which is the 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 other simple reason you want to boil it down to one sentence which is uh it's tough to be the authority 
you know, the ultimate, you know, it's tough to be a, a government, a royal family or whatever. It's tough to be the authority if all of a sudden now there's a structure behind you that is bigger than you are and you had nothing to do with it because people are going to look at you and say, yeah, I mean, you're the government and all that. You're pretty important, but I'd rather listen to those guys up there. So I'm going to wait until they actually come back. And until then, I'm not listening to a damn thing you say. <laughs> we don't really have that much more time left, but I want you to talk about some of the things that you're doing. You have your mug of tea. I do have my mug of tea, and you can see that because we're actually doing <laughs> video. It's not its not killing our bandwidth that bad, which is fine. Um, I, uh, on top of the, the strange world thing that I've been doing and the clues and the shows and this show, uh, there's a couple things that are that are happening. Uh, one is that uh, I have apps. I have I have applications for phones. Uh, a listener, a, a flat Earth listener who happened to be an app developer, uh, was very very kind. A uh, guy from Mobilize, I Mobilize, made uh, an app, a flat Earth clues app for both the um, uh, iPhones and Androids. So anyone that wants to, to, they can just go to iTunes, type in flat Earth clues, they will find it. It's free. Uh, and you can, you know, have my smiling face on your phone. You have it, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but not, yeah. but not. It's not an iPhone. It's an Android, right? Yeah, it's an Android. I'm an Android guy. Yeah, iPhone. No, that's overrated. Not, they're Androids. Did you know, by the way, that George Lucas owns the uh, the rights to that name? So that it's Droid. So that anybody buys an Android phone, they're actually giving money to George Lucas from Star Wars. Oh wow! Uh, yeah. <laughs> And then the other thing we're working we're working on slowly but surely is uh, eventually there's going to be a uh, radio show that's going to Patricia and I are going to be on a actual real subscription based radio show that's going to uh, that's, that's that somebody again a, a flat Earth person came forward uh, you know producer and said yeah let's let's see if we can do this so it's like right on I'm I'm I'm, I'm all for it if it happens great I'm I'm hoping it actually gets off but they're building it as we speak. So how long do you think it's going to take them to have it done? Like, what are they, what are they in the process of doing right now? They're already been working on it. I mean, the toughest part is actually building in just building because they're building a site from scratch. They're not doing, we're not joining another network. Uh, we're, uh, it's, it's actually its own network. And I can't give you the name, unfortunately, because there's some trademark. They're trying to, to iron out. Well, they don't want anyone else to jump on it. Uh, whoever who the guys they're getting involved with it, so it's like great yeah, again. But until it happens, it hasn't happened. You know, I have best laid plans. I've heard stuff like this before. You know, it's like, oh, I got great. But, oh yeah, there was stuff that was offered last year, and you know, things fall through, especially in in this sort of genre. But that's what well, we're I think it on. would be. I'd be real interesting to see that happening. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, I think so too. That'd be really interesting. I'd like to see that. Like, you've worked like, really hard at trying to get everything done, so I think that it it should take some credit to it. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it should be, you know, it's it's no different than a John B. Wells thing or Art Bell or, or a Coast to Coast thing. I mean, that's how the, it, we're it using it. Is it going to be national? Uh, from what I understand, it is. I don't know exactly how they're going to work out affiliates and how that's going to work. But uh, you know, all, all we know is we're the ones who have to be there, you know, doing the show every day, five days a week, uh, you know, talking flat earth all the time, interviewing people and doing all this stuff. Again, it's no different than what we're kind of doing now. I mean, Patricia and I talk a lot about Flat Earth. Whenever we're talking, wherever we're on the phone, it's like the first hour of it. It's like, okay, what's happening in Flat Earth right now? Go, 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 go. And there's so, so much what is out. happening right now? I know it's been hitting the news a lot. Yeah, oh, oh, you mean that thing just recently where the, um, well, they, they keep bringing it up. Again, the, the authorities bringing it up all the time now to where if you type in Flat Earth in the news, in fact, just yesterday or the day before, they said uh, the, the general, this this general comes out or is an admiral. I can't remember any he's any so Harry. So bring a military into it. Well, he said, oh, wow. he goes, he goes, he goes, if you don't think that China is taking over the oceans in the South China Sea, then you probably believe in the Flat Earth. And it's like, really, why would the admiral, you know, bring this up? And of course, all the major media covered it. So they're they're keep introducing the term into the media. They're trying to get everybody adjusted to it. Uh, and and people, some people say, well, it's because they're trying to put put it off as crazy. I'm going, no, I think they're going the other way. And I think they're they keep introducing it now because they're they're trying to get people conditioned to the term. So when they finally say it. When whoever it is comes out and does a press conference and says, "Yeah, by the way, there's flat," people are automatically clicks into their head. It's like, "Oh, yeah, I heard about that, right?" And then that way they freak out less. That's my opinion. Do you do you believe in uh, in like hidden in plain sight? How how? Oh yeah. You know, people like 
people do things they, they hide stuff in plain sight but when you type in google and you type in earth is the first yeah. word is real the second one is islam the third one is bullshit the fourth <laughs> one is iss and it just goes on and on like you could type as you start to type it tries to predict what you're trying to type yeah so well well but you but you're typing a different way type in is the earth so yep, type in that for the first three okay. words. All right, let's do this. Is the earth. That's flat or flat's first, round is second. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> that's awesome. That but is that, awesome. That, I, I bet you it didn't used to be that way. Agor that was, that's the, uh, what, the algorithms of, of Google. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's Google, so, right? That's Google, 100%. Yeah, so is the earth flat followed by is the earth round? Yeah, you'd think it'd be the other way around, right? See what I did there? <laughs> I like that. That's great. Yeah. That, so that must be real exciting for you, you know, to get on that show. Well, potentially, right. you know, I'm I'm crossing yeah, my fingers. I'm not. Gonna, yeah, I'm not going to jinx it. But uh, if it goes through, yeah, great. Because yeah, we we put in a lot of time into this, and it's the next logical step because we can spread the word even even farther and faster, and we can be even more focused to where it's going to be kind of a, a little hub for you know all things but because well, let's face it if, if we don't do this if we're if somebody else is going to uh it's just yeah, a question of, of who can who can get the, the things first and we didn't have to solicit any of this that's the best part like the app stuff that guy came to me and, and said yeah i want to build an app and it's free you don't have to do anything and you know the the producer that uh that came to me about the radio station thing it's like yeah yeah i think we can do this and it's again not the first producer that's out there you know this it's been going on for for months now but uh, you know, people, they're trying to step forward, kind of like radio station people that have reached out that I haven't done interviews with because they're nervous about doing the show, like the uh, the Alex Jones show. I don't you know, understand. They, they, Why would they be nervous about doing it? This is something that would be right up Mr. Jones's. Oh, because the topic alley. is so polarizing. People get so, you, you've you seen, the, well, you, you've uh, been in the yeah, full. I've... Imagine yeah, that. I know, I know, I know. Imagine that, but you have hundreds and hundreds of thousands, if not millions of subscribers out there doing it. Are you going to you gonna risk having a whole bunch of them? Because that's the big fear. It's like uh, there's going to be people that will just pull out and say, you know what? You've gone too far. I know. We well, can talk about lizard people. That's not that's not weird, you know, and ritual sacrifice, and that's not weird. But the second you say flat earth, they're like, oh, dude, you're so whacked. I'm out of here. Yeah, so. yeah, they want to pull their names away. Yeah, so that's that's all be. they're afraid of. I mean, look at the yeah. look at the Jimmy look at the Jimmy Church interview I still haven't gotten. He still hasn't posted it on YouTube, and that was two months ago. <laughs> I did an interview with him, and he was he was nervous about doing the show because of the topic. At least he was honest enough to tell me. I was not nervous about it. I mean, yeah, it's kind of an interesting topic. Yeah, yeah but yeah. you even you but, it rattles you. it rattles you. Uh, it, well, okay, I do find myself sitting in the car when we're driving down the road, going, "Why do I see the moon?" You know, what the hell's going on? See, and but you're fairly... I, I, I'm fairly well-rounded. I mean, I, I... Like I said, I, but see, again, it wouldn't affect me. I think it'd be kind of neat to see the people who created the damn thing show up, right? I mean... Bingo. Bingo. That's yeah, what I think. It, I'd like to see that. Yeah, I, I don't see everybody. why it would... I, but I think a lot of people would. That's the whole thing. Yeah. Like you yeah. said, everyone. So That's why, why not I think, do it? It's just fear. Big, well, yeah, they're they're a little nervous. They want to get people to where they're going to be freaked out less. I think. I think that's the ultimate goal. Is they want to, uh, you know, help introduce, help reveal this thing, uh, and they've got to get people a little bit more acclimated to it. So anyway, that's my that's my thing. Humanist Story thanks you for listening and your activity within our community. We hope to grow a little each day with the lives of ordinary people doing extraordinary things in life-changing events.